of Astro Dad. Aaron here, really excited today. Uh, just got the TPO 8 inch RC in today for an unboxing to show you guys uh, what this thing looks like and uh, what it has to offer. So here we go. Let's open this thing up. And I actually picked this one up off of Astro Mart. Uh, it was too good of a deal to pass up. I was considering this or the 8 inch Celestron Edge HD which was another good contender for what I was wanting to get for galaxy season coming up in the spring. And I ended up going with the TPO. All right, let's see. All right, so we have some extension tubes here for the focuser. Oh, nice. Here we go. And, oh, here's the OTA. 8 inch Richie Cratian. There goes the cap. <laughs> View of the primary mirror. Let's get a little closer here so you guys can see this focuser. So, this has a dual speed 2 inch focuser. Uh, Crayford style focuser, okay, with a 1 to 10 ratio. Um, it has a bracket here for your rangefinder. Vixen style dovetails both on the top and bottom, which is awesome because then you can mount and rail um, guide scope or other gear on top of here as well. That'll really come in handy. Awesome. The Richie Cratian telescope, and one of the reasons why reasons why I went with this model is because of its flat field. These uh, style telescopes are free of coma, chromatic aberration, spherical aberration, astigmatism, nice wide uh, flat focal plane, flat field for, for imaging, which is what all imagers are looking for is that nice flat field. Um, it does take reducers so you can bring down that f-stop. Uh, it is f8 so it's a little bit slower than what I'm used to imaging with. Um, but I do plan on using a reducer with this thing to bring it down from the 1600 millimeter down to about 1218, I believe. So that'll make it a 1218 millimeter F6 imaging system and should be a nice sweet spot focal length range for the type of galaxies I'm going after uh, this come spring. So not that it's limited to that. You can certainly go after other targets as well. Just getting a nice tighter uh, field of view, a lot different than what I'm used to, of course. So really excited about this thing to see what, it'll, see what it can do. Uh, the inside here, you'll notice it has some, I don't know if you can see those or not, but there's a baffling system inside this telescope. And what that does is it helps reduce the scattering of stray light and enhance contrast as well. The primary mirror is hyperbolic um, and the secondary mirror is also hyperbolic. And that's how it's able to produce a nice flat field free of all those optical flaws that you see in some other systems. The only possible challenge you might run into with a Richard Cratian telescope is collimation. Um, I have not collimated one of these yet, but from what I've heard, they, they can be um, somewhat of a bear, but based on videos and stuff I've seen, I don't foresee it being that much of a problem. It seems pretty straightforward uh, using a, a Cheshire or collimating eyepiece and a uh, laser collimator. Uh, it's also recommended to get a collimation ring which will go right here uh, behind the foc in front of the focuser which makes sure that the focuser itself is perpendicular to the focal plane so that any adjustment there uh, can be made to ensure a nice uh, accurate line of, uh, of light. 
coming back into the focuser. Um, so looking forward to doing that and uh, I'll certainly put a video together once I, once I get that accomplished. Rolled steel, this is not the, um, the carbon fiber version. Open design, so cool down should be very minimal, very reasonable times there on that. Some other uh, important things to note about this telescope is it's very heavy in the back. So it's very back heavy, so that's something to keep in mind when you're mounting this thing on uh, your telescope mount. You're probably going to want to offset some of that weight up front with either a guide scope or some, uh, some weights even up top here just to help with balancing uh, and declination. Another thing as well is the primary mirror itself is fixed back here in the mirror cell. So what that means to you is no image shift, unlike with the traditional schmidt cassegrain uh, type systems where they, uh, the mirror actually moves when focusing. Uh, this mirror is fixed, so that eliminates any image shift issues that you may have. And going back to back focus, this scope has over 250 millimeters of back focus. And that's great because that gives you all the room in the world, really, uh, for attaching focal reducers, filters, um, off-access guiders, you name it. You can pile on pretty much whatever you need here uh, with respect to its weight limit. But uh, as far as back focus goes, you've, you've got plenty there. So some other good points of engineering on this scope. The OTA itself weighs about 15.8 pounds. So that's something to keep in mind when you're putting together your imaging rig. Um, I'll have this mounted on my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, which is uh, perfect as far as you know being in the, the weight capacity limits of what that mount can do. Uh, most imagers would recommend that you stay within 50% um, of the maximum payload that your mount can take. In my case with the EQ6R Pro, you know, they advertise about 44 pounds maximum payload. So I'd really do try to shoot for staying under the, around that 22 pound limit. Now, it's not something set in stone, and I, you know, I think you can experiment with going a little higher. I think you'd probably even be safe to go up to 26, 28 plus pounds and still be okay. But this one at 15.8, even with my camera gear and my guide scope, I should come in right around 20, 22 pounds. So uh, just something to keep in mind there when you're, when you're looking at something like this. Well guys, that concludes our unboxing and overview of the TPO 8-inch RC Richie Cratian Telescope. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. More videos to come. Until next time, clear skies.